Right everyone, welcome back to here. Right, I'm going to make a sheath for this homemade Confederate Bowie that I made recently. This is a reproduction obviously, but it was made to look old. So I'm going to do a sheath that will resemble that, you know, that kind of era. So there's loads of ways you can um, cut these out. I'm just going to use scissors. <coughs> this is how I measured this. I basically just laid the knife on that'll be the back so it doesn't really matter and you just want about a 15 mil gap around and make sure that when you pull the knife out it will come out you do not want to follow this shape otherwise it will catch at the top so yeah cut that out now <coughs> and then it'll be folded along that line which will be best to wet it and then clamp it so I'll just cut this out of some scissors now can't find my good scissors but these should do and this is 3 mil leather which is about eight ounce i think in american uh, sort of um ratings for it right i'm going to wet this line now hopefully should enable this to fold quite well um we'll see how it goes yeah that's helping that to fold already So this will probably be easy enough just to fold by hand, I think. I need to, um, because you don't want to squash this down too much anyway. I reckon that'd be alright. So once that's dry, I'll see whether it needs the bit inside. If it does, we'll then glue that. If not, this can just be glued like that. But before we go any further, we need to do the belt loop make sure you've got this right so that would be against your body and then your knife will be like that quite easy to accidentally do these wrong around <clears throat> so make sure your loop is on the left or the right hand side whichever side you want and then for now we're just going to put some super glue on i'm going to glue one end push this up slightly and then glue that side down so that it will have a little bit raised it'll just make putting the uh, belt through easier this may need clamping as well because it won't depending on how rough the leather is it doesn't always stick straight away I might leave that for a bit and then push this put some glue on there push this up a little bit and then stick it down and then we'll be ready to sew that on so that should be stuck now as you can see I've done mine so it's sticking up a little bit it'd just be easier to get your belt on <clears throat> what you need to do now is do the holes so you can do this anyway you could drill it through you could punch it through I've got a homemade prick and iron I think they're called that's out of a one inch drill bit uh, yeah quite a few different ways you can do this what you want to do the more careful you are with all this stuff the better the results basically um, put a piece of wood under and then I'm going to probably do eight holes Right, so that's your holes done. I would recommend if you're ever doing leather work, try and keep it as absolutely clean as possible. I have a bad habit of making this all scratched and um, dirty. You want to keep it scratch free and dirt free, but because this is just for my own collection, I'm not really bothered. But yeah, you do want to be a lot cleaner than this. I'm going to have to open this up a bit now. So, where the holes are, we're going to cut a little groove in there so that the thread actually sits flush with the surface of this so when you put the knife in and out it won't catch so there's a couple of ways to do this one of the easiest ways to do it is just get a piece of sandpaper quite rough sandpaper and just Thank you. 
basically sand in a little groove there and then here but you can do it with a knife there's probably proper tools to do this as well right I'm going to sew this now I'm going to sew this from the inside out so from the outside it will look quite nice so you just go in and out and I'll leave this bit sticking out for now So as I say, in, out, and then what you do, you gradually fill in the gaps. You'll see what I mean. And I've doubled this thread over as well. It's the preferred way I like to do it. So keep it nice and tight. So when we go back up here for this bit, right, see there, I'm going to go back down this way now, and as you'll see it will start filling in the gaps, so that's there, come back down this way, You can sew this any way you want, but so there you go. And I'll just carry on till that's done and then do the top bit as well. So that's on. Before I go any further, I'm just going to take off the edges here of just this top bit because we won't be able to get inside again later. Doesn't really matter on the other bits. You can sand this if you don't have the tool. I made this tool. There's actually a video on my channel showing how to make these sort of edges this is just made out of a screwdriver and I've got one there a bigger one made out of a chisel so that's that bit that just makes that little open bit a bit nicer I have made a mistake here it's my own fault for just doing these things as I go along um, it's not going to affect the actual sheath I'll show you what I mean in a minute so I wanted this metal collar to go around here but I wasn't really thinking what I was doing when I put this on the belt loop it was going to be too high and it'll be too thick to comfortably get it on there now so I may just leave that <clears throat> funny thing is I did want this for something else anyway so this can now be used for another project which I think it would, it would go better with so what I'm going to do now is, I think we're ready to glue this up. It doesn't need the bit inside, I've checked mine, I'm pretty sure this will fit in easily enough. So it's just going to be glued, stitched, but I'm going to put some rivets in, because that is something they traditionally do, so it'll be a rivet at the top and the couple as they go down as reinforcing bits. But that's quite a traditional method. And then we can do the, we'll stitch it first and then I'll see if I'm going to do the leather sort of collar and shape. So yeah, to get your glue, I won't need to show you this bit, run some glue along there. Stick it down, clamp it. Super glue will work quickest, you can use wood glue, leather glue, they will take a little bit longer though. Right, so that's the sheath glued. Before I go any further, I'm just going to make sure this edge is reasonably level and smooth so that would just be putting it in a vice clamping it gently so you don't um, mark the leather and then just sanding it you can use a knife if there's lumps just to get this sort of level let's work later right you want to mark for the holes now so i would recommend taking a pencil I'm just scoring around about four million, I think. It's hard to actually say. All right, you can see the line there. And then we're going to take whatever you do the holes with. 
where my pricking iron is. And then mark for the holes all the way along to the bottom. It's probably not worth going all the way through with this. This is just to mark them so they're nice and even. But you'll get a nice even line using this. So just trying to think. Right, before you do this, if you're going to have rivets, I'd recommend because I've noticed when the when you put the rivets in, obviously they're going to break the um, thread. So I'd recommend marking where you want the rivets. So you're going to have one at each end, and then sort of somewhere in between. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, is I think I will st just stitch between those. So you'll have a main hole there, 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 there. So we'll just do stitching in between. So there'll be a line of stitching between there. So they won't actually cross over there. That way the rivet won't break the stitching. But we'll go right up to it. So now you can mark your stitches. Right, so what I'm going to do now is sew from the top to here and then back again, tied it off and then sew from here to there, back again, so that when we put the rivets in it won't break the stitching. If you drill through the stitching with this method that I stitch, it will, will break it basically. And it's just the same as what we did at the back, so just start whichever side. best so you want the you know the crap bit at the back basically so down leaving the gaps and then as you come back up you fill those gaps in right so that's the sewing done as you can see there's a section then a gap section and a gap so if any of these rivets affect the stitching it won't affect all of it It'll all be separate, so now we can drill a hole here, 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 and here to put these brass rivets in. You can use anything, you can use nails if you want, but I've just punched these holes, I didn't bother drilling them in the end, because you should be able to just hammer the rivet through once you've made the hole. I'll try and show you that. Still got to be careful when you do this, but right, this one's no good. what you're hammering onto has got a bit of a gap in it okay. so I'll carry on putting all of those in and then we'll start peening them over if you get these brass rivets I've just figured out a way to do these that I didn't know. See these rivets don't really, the washers don't really fit on properly. I think it's because they're sort of pressure fitted, which I didn't realise before. So I've noticed, if you put it on, now this is not the right tool, this is one of the punch, punches, lever punches. Um, you just need the tubes basically, you can force these on. Yeah, they work really good then. So then you would snip that off and then peen it over. But I don't think you'd even need to. But I am going to um, peen it over. So yeah, I'm going to keep doing that. Snip these off and then I'll peen one over and show you how to do that. Right, so you snip it off. To peen it over, you just want it on the edge of something.
that'll do. It's absolutely rock solid that. So I'll carry on doing the rest. Yeah, and to be honest, now that I know how to use those rivets properly, I think they're actually probably reasonably good. So I'll carry on doing the rest and then we're nearly done with the shift. So what we want to do now is smooth over these edges. You can use one of these edging tools and you just take off the edge basically. If you haven't got one of these you can just use sandpaper. Just basically with the sandpaper just curve over the edge. Right, to finish this edge what we want to do is give this a good sand and it's worth sanding it like you would a piece of wood. So go over it with some rough sandpaper first and then keep working your way up to finer and finer sandpaper. Right, to burnish, to burnish the edges you want to wet them don't soak or anything, just a bit, of, a bit of water, just so you can see that it's wet. And then you basically want a, a smooth piece of wood, and you just rub it. You can put these grooves in it, they help for doing over the edges, but not essential. Just going to put my maker's mark on quickly. I've never fucked this up yet, uh, so I hope I don't know. Oh nice, yeah, that's printed in lovely. There you go, look at that. Well worth putting a bit of water on actually, it doesn't have to make a difference. Right, I'm going to have a go at doing a bit of a pattern on this sheath along the edge here. Uh, hopefully it should work and look alright, if not it doesn't really matter. Um, <coughs> yeah, so it will be, I don't know how well you'll see it, there'll be this kind of shape around the edge, let's do it just slightly higher than the stitching, so that'll be my line, uh, maybe stop there when it gets up near the um, maker's mark, so about there, down, so I'm going to wet that. These stamps are just made from nails. I've got a video showing how to make these if you want. Pretty easy and they actually work really well. But yeah, just purely from nails and a you know, set of files, stuff like that. Um, and you don't need to harden them if you're doing it on leather. And if I've got one, I may finish that edge off with something else. But yeah, I think that looks all right. A working there you go yeah i think that's right really considering that is a homemade stamp as well i might just find something just to do a little end one there i've got quite a few uh just to embellish that end so it's got like an end but yeah i'm actually quite happy with that i think that looks all right it'll be time to color this in a minute so what we need to do now is clean this up as best as we can if you've noticed any glue on your uh sheath Get it off as best you can. I'm going to put it on a br with a brush today. I don't normally use a brush, but it doesn't really matter. You can actually pour this into a tray, dip your sheath into it, pour the stuff back into the bottle. I do like the old brown with the dyes. I've not used the brown for a while because I ran out. But yeah, that is nice, that is. Let's carry this on with a sponge. I'll show you the difference. Yeah, you can get a much better coverage of a sponge as you can see there right it is funny how sometimes some leathers seem to be more patchy than others uh, who knows maybe this leather just has more stuff in it that resists the dye who knows this is G wax, I don't know. I just find putting wax on afterwards seems to shine it up, protects it. But yeah, this does make a difference though, I would recommend it. 
That is looking pretty nice, I think. Pretty old school. That, that could be as old as that knife, I think. I don't know, a little bit too good. But <laughs> right, there you go then. There is the sheath for the copy of a Confederate Bowie knife. I'm really happy with that. I, the, I think the sort of non-uniform look to it actually makes it look more old. Yeah. I actually really, really like that. The rivets and that is sort of a traditional thing they did in those days. They quite often, when I looked, it's just folded over leather, belt loop on the back like that, rivets, and sometimes a chafe and a collar. Uh, I couldn't really do that on this. So yeah, I think that is actually really good. Quite tight in there. So this ain't gonna fall out. Which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. So what you'll see next then is some high quality images or footage video on this. Uh, and then at a later date, because it still needs a little bit of a sharpen, I'll cut some bottles with this or, or something. I don't think I could get this quite bottle cutting sharp because of the thickness of the blade. But we'll see. Right, there you go. There's how to make a sheath for a bowie knife in the traditional way and in a sort of easy basic way. Right, don't forget to watch the rest of the video. Thanks for watching. See you later.